Good tidings, all you lovely individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. And today we have the ultimate showdown, throw down. The absolute fraud squad gang matchup, Weibo versus NIP. And no two teams have we been with the ebb and flow of the season over especially summer but in spring as well and no single player have people flipped back and forth on more than Tarzan in the jungle but today it was a little bit of redemption and cathartic redemption for Tarzan. I can't decide whether this should be the branded this is the LPL game or if you should go for something maybe a little bit more luxury in the, in the likes of a, a BLG or a top esports type of series because, man, oh, man, the stories, the up and downs of Weibo Gaming and Ninjas in Pajamas this year, that screams LPL to me, and so did this series and the result that we got out of it. And listen, the turnaround for NIP, the miracle run, the upset against JDG, it has been Leyan. When he subbed in as the starter, that's when things started to change. He's playing Zyra. Every single game, Weibo finally got the memo and said, our entire pick ban is ban Zyra. Check. All right, let's go out for dinner, guys. We're prepped for this because even though Lian is associated with the Nidalee pick throughout his career, games three and four were absolute abominations of the cougar in the jungle. They were stinkers to an all-time level, is the unfortunate side here for Leanne and for Ninjas in Pajamas, what went on. Rolling with Leanne, do or die, everything situation seemed to be the go for the day with Ninjas in Pajamas. And again, with those consistent Zyra bands, it wasn't too bad in the first two games. You can look at it, I think you can make some type of, uh, of nitpicking around in the first game, but in the second game, absolutely does have a good game, have good contributing factor on the brand, getting a lot of that damage out, a lot of those burns. And then you go to games three and four. And games three and four are a problem because Leanne has said, oh man, I got to play, I got to play a desire all this time because you know what? They're scared. They're scared of the Nidalee is even better than the Zyra games. Um, that was not true whatsoever my brother those were some of the worst nidalee performances that i have ever seen in professional play and i'm including all regions in this one that was brutal oh including all regions that's how you know it's bad because we've had some abysmal lcs nidalee performances but uh, i mean on the other side you had tarzan go deathless in games three and four which is where he picked up double mvps and did it on two completely different play styles, the Sejuani in Game 3 and then the Lilia in Game 4. My man has 12 MVPs to lead the way in the entire LPL in summer. So as coin flippy as Weibo is, it seems to very much be a simple formula of Tarzan has a good game, win. Tarzan has a bad game, get smashed. And Tarzan is not necessarily a player that I would uh, throw into the label of that type of, you know, coin flip 50-50 type of situation. But that has been the result for Weibo so far this year, as you've laid out in, in these, one of these ones. But it's a great reminder, even through these struggles, even through the bad things that go on, whether, you know, you got to find a better answer at the end of the day. You got to find out whether it really is about the player. Is it the system? Is it the environment? Is it all sorts of things? The meta, whatever else going on. Because we know, deep down, this is who Tarzan is. These are the quality of games that you can get from him on these good days. Just got to have these good days. And man, it is a good day for Weibo Gaming when he plays like this. And the other factor I want to mention in on, Xiaohu. Again, the big important cog in the mid lane, making sure that he is contributing, making sure that he has this fluidity in the team on the map to make sure that he is good in his own lane. But he's sharing that wealth. He's expanding it around the rest of the team. And that certainly was the ticket throughout this series, but especially on the Zeri. That was one of the ones that I really liked seeing from him. Again, this expansion, you know, new home for the ADCs in the mid lane type of meta. Zeri is one of the champions that I would have wanted to see Shahu play and certainly looked good on it in this series. Especially now all these Zeri showing up when uh, actual marksmen, guys like Light, we've so accustomed to seeing them play these picks and then the mid laners come in and do it even 
a little bit better. Obviously, it helps getting that solo XP, but uh, yeah, with, with how bad Weibo smashed games 3 and 4, you're left wondering, JDG lost to this? How did JDG, were they just slumping on the day? What went wrong with them? Uh, well, uh, yes, I think slumping on the day has to be part of it. Part of it does need to give into the credit towards NIP and their execution and strategy, all those type of things. And then the other factor comes in, again, that we will talk about is sheer not making an appearance for JDG. I think we talked a lot about what type of difference he makes for that roster when he's in the lineup. The growth that we saw from him individually over the couple of weeks, couple of times that he was clearly the starting option. Whatever shifted, whatever changed in that to go back to Flandre, he individually and the team, the result was not what you needed from them. So Weibo now advancing to top four, get the bonus life losers bracket to match up against BLG. But NIP is not dead. They've already qualified for the regional gauntlet. And that brings us to what we're talking about next. And that is as we level up to all of these summer playoffs, it's time to see who we believe will be qualified for the world championship. We're going to go through all the major regions. Some are obviously more obvious than others in terms of which teams will be represent, but we start with that LPL. Four squads going because they were the second best performing region at MSI. BLG and Top Esports seem like the obvious ones, of course, because they are the two best teams. They have most championship points carried over from spring. Whichever one of them doesn't win is probably going off of points so let's assume that those two are probably going to the world championship then you're left with lng weibo nip and either jdg or anyone's legend depending on if al somehow upsets top esports but who's the most likely for you to come in that three spot behind blg and tes it's the easy answer and the hardest answer at the exact same time because it has to be lng rolling on through being that third team for the LPL, it's easy in that type of sense. It's hard to make that case because of the time gap in this sense of the last time we saw oh, them wow. on the rift, when they were figuring things out, when it was this rapid ascent back and re reclaiming a top spot in the LPL situation for LNG. Is that the team that we're getting? Are we getting this LNG that has made the climb back up, that has reasserted themselves as one of these elite squads in the LPL? Or are we getting the LNG that started out this year? The one that made you question, just like we just talked about, questioning about Tarzan's performances with Weibo Game, made you question his own performances with LNG and what was going on in the mid lane. No questions about that for me. I think that we are clearly going to continue to see this LNG that has improved, that has really more or less revealed their true selves, and that true selves is one of these top competitors in the LPL. July 28th. That's the last time we saw LNG on the Rift. By the time they're rolling around playoffs this weekend, you're past three weeks, getting closer to a month since we last saw them on the Rift. Uh, they better be ready for some Aurora gameplay. That's <laughs> all I got to say about that. She wasn't around last time these boys were hitting the Rift. Yeah, and obviously been a focal point across most of the region so far. So uh, then we're left with, I mean, I, I feel like heading into playoffs, you would have said JDG should be the easy lock for fourth, but they drop to NIP. Even assuming Top Esports takes out anyone's legend and we're going to be seeing JDG in the gauntlet. Going off of momentum, d do we have faith in Weibo right now? I I think for momentum, you have to be going with Weibo. If they can, can stay in this meta, they can continue to show an understanding of it, of what they can do. Anything is possible for this Weibo team. And I mean, that's a statement that can almost be made at any point, given the fluctuation that Weibo has shown us. But specifically right now, what is possible with them, the options available in the jungle with a talented player like Tarzan, who has a champion pool like he does, that is a ticket that you can take advantage of. A we already talked about Xiaohu in the mid lane. These ADC meta rolling on through. I'm sure there's something other than just the Zeri that you'd like to see him cook up, that you know that he's capable of adding into the roster, the packed stable of Lucian and Tristana as the other ADCs that you love to see him play type of thing. I think that is another angle for it. Light is certainly someone that in the big moments can step up and be that ADC to deliver that type of damage. Weibo's got a shot at this in that type of sense. The question is, as you laid out, 
JDG still lurking in the waters. Is it going to be JDG Flandre? Because that's my easy answer of a big uh, X on that one. That's not happening for the squad. If it's sheer, well, that is a more so an 85 to 90% way where I'd want to lean towards that. And that is just the proven thing of what can you get from someone like Yagao in the mid lane. And if he's, you know, rolling through right. And then as well, Knight. And uh, sorry, excuse me. Blanket. Ruler in the bottom they lane. They wish they had Knight right now. <laughs> uh, if they had Knight, it's not a question because then they're already having a world spot locked up. That's as simple as that equation is. But Ruler down in the bottom lane, and the factor that he can have, if the rest of the things are afloat, are staying okay, are not being problems for this JDG team, that's where his positive effect, his difference making can come into factor and be the thing that pushes JDG over the top. That's where I'd roll through it in, in the LPL. If we're seeing Sheer, I'm giving the, the edge, the advantage towards JDG, making it the full run through that gauntlet that they're going to have to go through. Otherwise, I think that this could be the Weibo gaming angle. And if you're outside of the LPL looking ahead to Worlds, if you're matching up against a Weibo or an, definitely an NIP, but even Weibo, you're maybe feeling a little bit more confident than a squad like JDG because they have Kanavi, Ruler, more consistent. But the the fluctuations of Weibo, they could 3-0 smash a Western team or not show up on the day and get dumpstered. But if, if you're the West or anyone else, you're hoping maybe JDG doesn't make Worlds. Yeah, I think that has to be the hope if you're the LCS or L LEC in this type of sense. The problem is, as you laid out, you're still putting through a powerful option no matter where it is and whether that power is going to be just flat out overwhelming in the likes of a blg or a top esports or whether that power is going to be uncertain in the likes of a weibo gaming and nip where it can fluctuate between those type of levels you got to take your chance you got to take your risk in that fluctuation option because the certainty of that overwhelming power of the lpl that is not the buzzsaw that you want to run into for some of these early or wusho matches that you will have at the world championship lck side of things for worlds maybe there's less teams you're talking about making but it's still they've got at least five teams that you feel like are world's caliber squads uh gen g is already clinched there's a crazy scenario where they could go as the fourth seed somehow but Team's going. They've already qualified. Genji's going to go. Hanwha Life has actually more championship points now uh, because they've already finished further than T1. So I feel like Hanwha's a very safe bet and the team you're second most confident in. Then you've basically got two spots left for T1, KT Rolster, and D plus Kia. And honestly, I could see a scenario where any one of those teams is the odd man out. Someone is going to be on the sidelines. Someone is going to be left watching Worlds with the rest of us on these co-streams. They're watching Kadro, whatever it's going to be. The LCK equivalent, of course. Whatever it ends up being, you're missing out on either Faker, Showmaker, or BDD in this set. So we are serious. And again, that's not just off names. That's on power that we're seeing this year from those three players, our big power players in the mid lane. The LCK does not disappoint. As you said, Gen G, well, weird, wacky, wild world where they end up in that four spot, not happening. They are taking that number one seed to the world championship for the LCK. That second seed right behind it, Hanwha Life has gotten these points. They've acute it. They've gotten it. People think, again, of course, the mainstay, well, if it's not team one at the top, of course, they're number two. They're right behind Gen G. That's not how it's been this year. Hanwha Life has usurped T1 in that type of second position for long enough to claim this type of thing. And T1, you know, you don't get necessarily quite as many extra cherries that you would think you would for getting to the final situation. Spring, all that stuff is how you have a Hanwha Life ahead of T1. And T1 is going to need to be able to prove to the rest of the LCK that they can take one of these spots. That's going to be the big one. They just managed to lock up their playoff spot. Of course, most recently was the big one with T1. This is the next next task up, is locking down one of these world spots, securing it for the team. You can deal with some of these issues that we've talked about with the team and the gameplay. Zeus in the top side is, of course, of one of them. Solving that out, you're going to have to do that throughout this gauntlet playoff type of run scenario to lock it down if you're T1. And again, they'll need at least a few rounds in playoffs if they want to rack up that championship point second seed. So... 
may be likely that they're going through gauntlet unless they really turn it up here on playoffs. But I feel like of those three, I mean, D-plus is higher in the standings, has more of the momentum. I know KT just took down Gen G, but... D plus, especially Showmaker talking about all his stuff, not making worlds. I feel most confident in them going. KT is the easy answer for a squad that just misses out. But this is three-fifths that DRX Miracle Run 2022 roster. And you stick this KT squad in a gauntlet? You don't think they got some magic in them? Uh, that's the, the craziest things here. Because I'm push and pull on this one. Because you can look at it and say, okay... Well, where does KT get some of that credit, some of that boost for beating a squad like Gen G? And, and you know, kind of all these other performances, you carry that through into these best of five scenarios, these big, better, you know, more in-depth series you can focus in on and go, hey, when it's a best of, you know, best of three, we've been able to zero down in and we can take down a king like Gen G. Well, who's to say we can't do that? against a Hanwha Life, against a D plus Kia, against a T1 to secure that type of ticket. And as you laid out, you know, you're you're looking at players like Barrel, Deft, BDD, Piosik. They've all had big time moments, clutch series to come through and secure something for themselves. On the flip side, you look at D plus Kia, the run that they've been on, where they are in the LCK standings, Showmaker, Lucid, how good has he been as a rookie stepping into the unfillable shoes that Canyon would have left behind and delivered the job that he's done? Checking in the bottom lane, aiming in the job that he's done and the damage and the consistency that we've seen from him in the last couple of weeks. Heck, even Kingen looking a lot more like the Kingen of DRX days. Ch getting that world championship is another ticket. I think when you're looking at the LCK one and the LPL, certainly you can kind of weed out one or two that you didn't want in that type of patch or you or you know you feel like there's a better flower or better option in the lck it's it's you're spoiled for choice any of these f uh, five that you're dealing with are going to be in that bracket of four that you'd want to send to a world championship i got a telecom war final gauntlet run best of five for that final spot winner take all high stakes think t1 there's just no way this team's too good to not even qualify for the world championship LCK and LPL, it's kind of a mess of teams. How do I only pick four? The LCS, you're saying, thank God we only have three. And of all the regions, this seems the most cut and dry. I think we would both be shocked if one of FlyQuest, Team Liquid, and C9 are not representing at Worlds. Now, the all-important thing here, of course, with the LCS and the LEC as we talk about them, not a guarantee x spot in that, in that type of one you're talking about having that play in matchup of course is going to be the big one to keep an eye on with with these ones when we're talking about that very final spot but we are looking at this for the lcs and yes you have very clearly laid it out for us there is definitely a trio that you want to be sending if you are the lcs and that trio starts at the very top with team liquid our undefeated champions and i and i do that quotation because yes a, a relatively legit und undefeated run, but certainly one that is is being hyped up quite a bit more than I think it deserves in that type of situation. Cloud9 rolling on through as that second seed, losing, of course, that head-to-head -to, -head to Team Liquid, but taking through the rest of this split, the improvements that we have seen since that disappointment. And again, these have been the improvements that you would have absolutely nailed on the board when you saw how bad that spring split was and where things needed to rebound and how they turned around. There it is for Cloud9. And the third squad, FlyQuest. Certainly a bit of, uh, a little bit uneasier on this one, given what you saw from them at MSI, the debacle, the turnaround to all of a sudden crash down from the NA Finals. I think that they've done enough this split to rebound from that. I think the individual players in Whippo and Inspired are still guys that you want to give that opportunity, even if you've been bitten time and time again on that international stage to give them that opportunity, to give them that running room, and for young players on this team for, for FlyQuest checking down in the bottom lane is certainly one that I want to check in again at an international event because they talked about the lessons that they were learning and experiencing during that first one, and I think there has been signs of that growth, signs of that improvement, at least domestically, to warrant another trip around to a year international event. Not seeing Dignitas or 100 Thieves leveling up in playoffs to be able to usurp either of those three squads. The LEC side of things... 
it's somewhat similar. Number one, G2 has already clinched the spot, regardless of how season finals. If they lose the next round, they're already going to the world championship. Now, the way it works is the two squads that are in the finals for season finals will be the other two seeds at the world championship, which means both Matt Lyons, Koi, and Fnatic are a single best of five away from qualifying for the world championship. Fnatic is the obvious second answer and looks like the best team in EU right now to represent. So then you're left with BDS, MDK, Giant X, and SK fighting for that final world spot. And nobody out of that, uh, you know, quadruples has really shown me that they are ready to take that mantle for the LEC. G2, it's it's almost bad that they have this spot all locked up the way that they have with as turbulent as this split has been by their standards. They the can LEC. go under the radar now, just bow out early in season finals, have everyone underestimate you heading into Worlds. Maybe they're geniuses. Uh, trying, trying the different strategy this time around for G2. Fnatic, on the other hand, definitely one of these teams that you need to see at this international event. One that needs redemption from MSI, redemption from the EWC, and one that has shown that when there is that misstep, there is a fire that is lit under them. Again, they get back, they rebound. We've seen how, how long that rebound lasts is certainly still a, a, a thing that is a question mark for this team and how long they can keep it together. That question is, as you laid out, that bottom four and knowing that a squad like Mad Lions, Koi is lurking down there, needing only one series win to lock up that world spot. It makes you feel a little uneasy because I think a lot of us would rather see a little bit more of a competitive fight amongst the likes of a BDS, maybe SK gets it together finally in one of these crucial moments and puts together that series to claim one of these spots. Heck, maybe even Giant X and we're getting Jackies at Worlds would be something to talk about. Most likely it looks like Mad Lions Koi if they can just keep any of this hotness together can get this series win. And listen, if they go to that winter form, they were one of the most exciting teams in EU. So kill the memes about Mad Lions at Worlds. If they somehow beat G2 and Fnatic in back-to-back -back best of fives, then absolutely they're deserving of that final world spot. But that is all the time today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.